Okay, you mentioned capital broadband. You also touched on education and housing there. Is there anything else that you think needs to be done generally? We'll come to your specifics about what Robert Smith, Vista, yep. uh, Fund, Fund 2 are doing. But anything else that you, I mean, Biden, presumably you have confidence in, as opposed to the previous incumbent. Um, Biden probably goes, well, who knows? We'll see whether he goes in 24, whether it's Kamala Harris or somebody else, we'll see. But do you have confidence in the administration to get it done? And, and what other things should they do? So, you know, I think one of the most important things is the infrastructure bill. And, you know, there's been a, a, a plan, the Latimer plan that's been put forward which will eliminate a lot of the broadband disparity issues, not only in the urban communities, but in the rural communities, which is important, you know, in terms of where African-Americans live, Latinx live, et cetera. And I think that Latimer plan is one that needs to be adopted and funded full force. So, you know, end of story, full stop, right? Uh -huh. That creates an infrastructure. And once you have the infrastructure, you and I chatted about this before, you know, once you have an infrastructure of an ecosystem, then that enables you know, if, if you want to think about it, the innovation to now occur for the solutions for that specific community to now embrace. You put that broadband infrastructure throughout these communities, you know, rural and, and urban, and I will tell you, you know, those business and the innovation, I believe in the American people in that regard, will actually come up with the solutions to solve their problems. But if you don't have that basic infrastructure, if you didn't have water, if you didn't have electricity, you can only go so far. Well, if you don't have broadband, you can only go so far in terms of your business, your business outreach, your development, et cetera. So if the Biden administration, uh, Biden-Harris administration decide um, to, to embrace that plan, which is the plan we've been socializing with all the members of the business roundtable, et cetera, and people really believe this, this makes a lot of sense. In fact, all things, there's stuff you could change, but that in and of itself Will have will make a sea change difference in the opportunity set in the communities and also the competitiveness of America. So that's kind of point number one. Point number two, I think we really have to revisit this whole idea of you know student debt. Okay, you know I you know one of the things we're doing with with uh, Fund Two Foundations and Student Freedom Initiative and you know which is an ability for students, STEM students who go to, you know, right now we're doing the first cohort of S -H -S uh, HBCUs to borrow money to finish their education. And when you finish education, you don't pay that money back to the government, you pay it back into this fund that gets recycled for future students. And so I've been having conversations with the prior administration, this administration saying, listen, you can fund this whole thing for 1.7, you know, billion, not billion dollars, and you can graduate every STEM student from every HBCU in perpetuity, in perpetuity. Okay, you think about that. What that leads to is a massive uh, effort to decrease the wealth disparities between African Americans and white Americans. It's about 10 to 1 right now, because as you educate that population, they start making, you know, more more income. And they don't have the, the, the debt burdens that keep them from, from actually creating wealth. And I don't know if you knew this, but 65% of African-American wealth gets consumed by student debt and debt servicing. Think about that, right? Because getting back to that redlining, if you actually couldn't actually borrow money from your parents' house to pay for your education, you now have to go take out student loans. Your parents take out parent plus loans. Grandparents take out parent plus loans. Now, all of a sudden, you're paying that back for 20 years. And in that time, you're not buying houses. You're not investing in stocks or bonds. You're not investing in a business. And so that inhibits your ability to actually create wealth for your family for yet another you know, three quarters or half of a generation. That's one of the big issues. So when I think about it, Latimer plan, broadband infrastructure, second biggest thing I think they could do is really embrace the idea of and I, I don't want to use the word eliminating student debt, but making student debt more manageable that recycles for the African-American community that go to HBCUs who are studying you know, who, who are studying STEM. I think that's an important part of what, what the administration could do outside of what we talk about. And hence your, your gift, I think you're doing the commencement speech at Morehouse and you, 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 you gave the graduating class, you paid off all their debt, if I remember rightly. Right, and, and their parents' uh, student loan debt, the parent plus debt, right? 
but the learnings from that, that's what I what got me, you know, when when as we're like all things, it's not as easy, it sounds like to pay off someone else's <laughs> debt, right? You got to create constructs and all that. So, but as we got and we're doing that work, what we discovered was 60 plus percent of wealth, you know, that African Americans would have is getting chewed up by the servicing of the student loans. They have to take out more and their jobs typically are paid less because they haven't had equal opportunity in the workplace, paying it off long. And so it, it stalls the wealth creation for sometimes 20 years right. in, in a family. And that's, I'm like, well, there's got to be a systemic solution to this. And so I've got some really smart people you know, working on it. And that's how we came up with the Student Freedom Initiative. Okay. And that's what we've launched in our first cohort starts uh, this fall. We've got nine HBCUs. Um, uh, uh, for this first cohort. Right. Now you've touched on what already on what you're doing at Vista Fund Two, etc. What other things are you you trying to get done? You know, we're we're modestly we we've, we've started our Afro American in uh, in intern program. We have our first few interns, uh, and we're going to roll that out. I was talking this morning about ro rolling that out globally. Uh, this is aimed at Afro-American students uh, in, um, in the US at the moment. Uh, and what, what we're also, but we've got the S4 Women's Leadership Program. We have the first flight of that at, at UC Berkeley or doing a virtual course at UC Berkeley. So we're doing some small steps in relation, in comparison to yours, but what other things are you doing at Fund2 and Vista? Sure, sure. Let's let's start with Vista, and it's important that you are doing that. And I'm, I'm, I applaud you. And the, the great the great thing to do is to keep talking about it and doing it, and and make sure you share with more of our business colleagues not only what you're doing but the efficacy of it. I always think about it is you got to think about the entire ecosystem, board level, seats, you know, C-suite, you know, uh, employees, onboarding, interns, right. Think about how you develop programs for every one of those, you know, tranches, shall we say, in the organization. I look at, you know, we have a board initiative now. Um, then we've got 70 uh, portfolio companies, um, I think as of yesterday. <laughs> but uh, uh, when I look at our external boards and our board initiatives, we you know we've got 60% of our boards have a, a, uh, a woman on them. 70 percent have a person of color okay and you know we'll get to 100 percent in both you know eventually you know and we will right so but part of it is you actually have to create the incentive structure so like all things people do what they're kind of what they're paid to do to a great extent so one of the things for my senior executives at vista is they have a grant um, for equity ownership in the company half of how they actually vest into that grant is dependent upon if they meet their DEI and ESG initiatives. Okay. Okay. So now you tied it. And this is real money that it gets tied to. You vest only if you meet these objectives. And those objectives mean that your board has got diversity, your C suite has got, these are things they have control over. The C suite has, you know, diversity. You know, how you're onboarding students, how are you implementing the conscious inclusion program that not only onboards, you know, diverse candidates into your employee pool, but also creates an environment where they can flourish because it's useless just to onboard them if you got conscious bias in the workplace and so they can't actually participate and be effective. Okay. Onboarding of our intern X program. I think we've got in our intern X platform 14,000 or so, you know, African American students. And some of my companies take three interns a year. I just got a note yesterday. One of them is taking 25. Okay. And each one, each one of the CEOs knows that's part of their DEI objectives and, and part of their MBO. So how are they going to get compensated? So you've got to now look, okay, well, am I, do I actually have the right compensation structures and, you know, MBOs for everybody in my organization to ensure that I get the benefits uh, and the behavior that I want? And in some cases, it's useless to give them those if you don't actually give them the tools. So that's why we create things like our Women's Leadership Summit, right? Sounds like you have something similar. Yeah. You know, and we have, you know, we have programs um, that we do for, you know, in encouraging women and minorities to come to uh, to learn about investing, which is, you know, an underrepresented 
um, um, uh, in terms of population industry as well as technology. So we do a Frontiers Fellows program where we have African-American students who want to be, go into the world of finance or private equity. And understanding their, the dynamic is not only the internship, but we also give them a stipend to help defer the student loan costs that they have, right? Which might change the decision on where they go and what they do. You know, our Girls Who Invest program, we do same sort of program. I think we've got 29 plus in, interns we've done, and I think we've got another nine or 10 this year. Um, and that's all women who are interested in investing, because that's, again, the underrepresented in, in, in women of color, and ensure that they have a chance to participate in our private equity, our credit, our public market businesses, compliance areas, whatever it might be. So, you know, you got to be really, in my mind, holistic about it and think about the sphere of the of, of influence that you have. You know, you've got a board of directors, you've got a C-suite, you've got senior managers. How do you ensure the senior managers are building out succession plans that include diverse candidates? You know, you can always go to, we call them Rooney rules and all that, those sort of things. I think all those things are important parts of, of building um, a, a, a culture. You know, one of our companies and, you know, I when we bought the company, in all honesty, had one of the most challenging workforce cultures in my mind for, for women. So we've actually formed a coalition to address that in that company. And over 50 women participated and it has transformed that company's culture. Okay. You now, you know, one third of the women leaders in the program took significantly bigger roles as a result of these sort of programs. Okay. But it's education, it's 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 it is and it's also creating management objectives, you know, management by objectives uh, and tying people's compensation uh, to that, that's what makes a huge difference. And then of course, figure out learnings. You know, we, 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 we spend time with different coalitions of groups that are doing this and teaching and educating um, boards, you know, public company boards, private company boards, and also what I call building infrastructure. One of the things I have my team building is you know, you always hear about, well, there's just not enough candidates for boards. And I told my team, I said, well, one of the challenges we have, of course, is pipeline. All right. You say in technology, you know, how many African-Americans in you know, Latinx are there in technology? Well, there hasn't been a great pipeline. But if you look at a board of, of a company, every one of them needs, for instance, an audit committee chair. You don't necessarily need to know technology to be an audit committee chair. So I tasked my team. I said, Go build out on our, you know, we have Vista University. It's a learning management system for all our employees. I said, go build out a construct where we can now pull, you know, mid-level managers from, you know, PwC and any, you know, or, or Deloitte or any of those where they can take, a, go on a program and learn how to become an audit chair for a tech company. And then let's put them on our boards and they can, worst case, be, and now that, you know, they, they can be head of the audit committee. And now guess what? We're nominated to me. And now guess what? They now have their first board experience. So now when the big public company boards are saying, oh, we don't have enough. We've got to take the same five people and put them on every single board. We now can at least deliver a pipeline of people over the next few years and say, well, these folks are, you know, trained and have been been on some of our corporate boards and have sought it, you know, they're private companies, but some are public now, but, you know, and, and have the ability to now serve a, a, a greater good. Right. In, in public company board, you know, diversity, diversity. So, you know, use the infrastructure that you have. I always say, you know, you only kind of control the things that are under your purview and your control and, okay. and, and build systems that can help your people be successful. 